Hello class, this is a re-recording of a uh, video that I was working on on John Skelton. So I'm going to cover the same material. Uh, there was an audio problem with the, uh, the previous version, so using a different um, software platform that should, uh, should resolve that. So uh, John Skelton was um, a poet laureate. And this was a title that was uh, bestowed at this time upon really anyone who uh, was a recipient of a higher degree. So he was a, um, a professional, uh, in a sense, credentialed poet, uh, graduated from Oxford in 1488. He was a court poet to Henry VII and was later a tutor to Henry VIII, who uh, you may have heard of, of course, um, he was known for having a number of wives. He was responsible for the Church of England breaking off uh, from the Catholic Church as well. And um, this, uh, I guess, schism within the church was is something that actually is a theme of this poem that I assigned uh, called Mannerly Marjorie Milk and Ale. It's a, it's a poem that's highly critical of clerical culture. And a um, few, uh, few things about it. It is um, a poem that is uh, really tinged with a lot of um, obsessive rhyming and tongue-twisting wordplay. It is a, a dialogue poem, uh, and there are three speakers. So there is uh, Marjorie herself and uh, James Fodor, who's a, a cleric, and then a, a third speaker, uh, kind of an, an observer, who is uh, seeing all this going on and, um, and responding to it. Now, um, the refrain is where you'll find that, um, that third speaker. And James Fodor is the speaker in lines 4, 8, 9, 17, and 22 to 24. And you can tell just by you know, those, those numbers that the poem jumps back and forth quite a bit. And uh, it is Marjorie who, um, who dominates the conversation. And some of James's uh, reactions and, and actions are uh, implied by her, by her dialogue. So this is um, a, a criticism that Skelton's le leveraging on these young cl clergymen, they're supposed to be celibate, they're supposed to be pious, um, but uh, he is um, uh, essence, essentially uh, making advances on Marjorie and uh, won't take no for an answer and then it elevates to um, an implied um, assault upon her. This, um, the poem itself is... Uh, like I said, targeting um, Christianity. Um, it also is um, somewhat sexist in its portrayal of of Marjorie. Her um, some of her airs and graces are kind of mocking, mockingly chanted in each of the each of the refrains. So that um, the the phrase of her being mannerly is is somewhat um, being used ironically. And um, so she's being depicted as uh, kind of a tease. And from a modern, a modern perspective, I think we certainly find that, that depiction of her um, distasteful. But it's very much reflecting the, um, the outlook at, at, the, at the time. And something that unfortunately is you know, still with us today where um, there's a kind of blame the victim mentality that, um, that can, can happen. So there um, is a, another layer to this where Skelton himself was a, um, he was a poet, he was also a priest. Uh, he was a priest with a common law wife. So he was forbidden, forbidden to marry, uh, but got around that by essentially having um, this live-in live -in girlfriend. And um, the reference at the end of the poem where Marjorie says she will die for thought 
um, suggests a kind of thought, thoughtlessness of male behavior, thoughtlessness of the law where um, she faces poverty, uh, prostitution, and maybe even uh, maybe even death. And as I, I do my close reading, I'll, I'll talk about I'll talk about that. So um, okay, so the poem itself uh, is broken up into four stanzas, and you can um, you can call it open in another window and uh, kind of read read along with what I'm doing here. Uh, she says, "I beshrew you by my fay." Uh, fay means faith. These wanton clerks be nice alway. Uh, these wanton clerks are always nice, which she's stating um, ironically because they're not they're not nice. Avant, avant, my popinjay. Um, what will ye do? Nothing but play. Tilly, uh, valley, straw, let be. I say, and then here's the refrain: Gup, Christian clout, gup, Jack of the Vale. With mannerly Marjorie, milk and ale. So he's making these advances on her. She is trying to um, shoo him away. And uh, and as I mentioned earlier, um, as far as the the jumping back and forth, we're not given uh, a lot of signals of that. But line four is apparently James. What will ye do? Nothing but play. So at this point, he's essentially kind of calling her um, a, a tease. And, uh, and then he again, after the refrain, by God, ye be a pretty poad, which is a, a toad. Um, and I love you a whole cartload. Straw, James Fodor, ye play the fode. I am no hackney for your rod. Uh, rod there is probably a, a sexual euphemism. Go watch a bull, your back is broad. Then we get the refrain again. Gup, Christian, clout, gup, jack of the veil, with mannerly marjorie, milk and ale. Um, ye wis ye deal uncourteously. What, would ye frumple me? Now, now fee. Um, what, and ye shall be my pig's nigh? By Christ ye shall not know heartily. So they're going back and forth here. Uh, she says, I will not be japed bodily. So again, she's resisting his advances. We get the refrain again. Gup, Christian, clout, gup, jack of the veil, with mannerly marjorie, milk, and ale. And here is um, James again. Walk forth your way, ye cost me not. Now I have found what I have sought, the best cheap flesh I ever bought, yet for his love that all hath wrought. Okay. Now, here, um, there's an implied action there where um, that ass assault occurs that I was talking about. So, um, so he pushed himself upon her. Um, there's a kind of implied rape scene that happens. And um, he's just saying that this cost me, this cost me nothing. I got what I wanted. And, um, and now he's leaving. And so when she says, wed me or else I die for thought, her response to this trauma, this event, and the shaming is that he should marry her uh, or else it's going to bring, you know, shame upon her and, and kind of send her into a, um, a life of, uh, of poverty, potentially prostitution, um, etc. And, and then we get at the end the refrain and um, this word gup, which probably means go up. Um, go up, Christian clout, your breath is stale. Go, mannerly Marjorie, milk and ale. Um, gup, Christian clout, gup, jack of the veil with mannerly Marjorie, milk and ale. So we get that refrain again, this kind of commentary on, um, on this, this event. So this is um, a poem that is uh, seemingly somewhat lighthearted in his language, implies very much a, a kind of darker side. It uh, contains a social critique as well of, uh, of the church and of uh, churchmen, these clerks in particular, who um, are, you know, were known to be somewhat rowdy within any town. Um, if you, you know, a town has a, a monastery or university uh, and it's just filled with 
these these rowdy characters. Uh, a lot of them came from wealthy families, and they were known to just uh, cause a lot of problems within within cities, within towns, with uh, with the local people. So, um, so this is kind of a, a glimpse into uh, into that world, and uh, a good example of uh, some early modernist, uh, early modern um, poetic aesthetics as well. So, um, so again, I hope you enjoyed the lecture. And um, I will uh, be trying to do more of these as uh, we adapt to this um, life under uh, a quarantine for the, for the duration of the semester and possibly the summer. Uh, but uh, in any case, um, good luck on your work this week, and uh, I look forward to reading it. Thank you.